We're one to search for miracles. We pray from death's captivity. Disease and demons both retreat. Good health succeeds infirmity. At your request the seas obey, and lifeless limbs grow strong and new, while things long lost are found again, when faithful hearts rely on you. All dangers vanish at your prayer, and deep distress is quick to flee. Let those who know your power well all rightly praise your charity. At your request the seas obey, and lifeless limbs grow strong and new, while things long lost are found again, when faithful hearts rely on you. All praise and love unceasingly be to the Father, request the seas obey, and lifeless limbs grow strong and new, while things long lost are found again, when faithful hearts rely on you. Dear clients and friends of St. Anthony, may the Lord give you peace. My name is Brother Vincent DiLorenzo, and I am the guardian here at the National Shrine of St. Anthony in Cincinnati, Ohio. As we continue with the solemn novena to St. Anthony, we are still not able to have any public services here at the shrine for the safety and good health of everyone. We will continue to have video messages of the friars as they conduct the novena prayers of the nine Tuesdays before the Feast of St. Anthony on Saturday, June 13th. If you would like to have a candle lit here at the shrine or to submit a prayer petition, please go to our website, www.stanthony.org. Please be assured of our prayers for each and every one of you. Stay safe and healthy, and God bless you. Good day. I'm Father Dan Kroger, who is a resident of the Shrine, and I work downtown with Franciscan Media. So let's begin our Novena prayers. Lord, King of heaven and earth, you created every spiritual and corporeal being. We thank you for yourself. Lord, you willed that Jesus redeem us by the blood of his suffering and death. We thank you for redemption. Lord, your son will come again. We thank you for the second coming. Let us pray. Father, you are glorified in your servant, Saint Anthony. His glory is the crowning of your gifts. In his life on earth, you give us an example. In our communion with him, 
you give us his friendship. In his prayer for the church, you give us strength and protection. We praise and thank you, Lord, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. This reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John. The crowd said to Jesus, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which came down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, we hear a call for a sign from Jesus. And I was thinking how oftentimes in our prayer, to St. Anthony especially, we always think about what we need when we pray to St. Anthony. This has been going through my head for 40 some years since I was working as a Franciscan priest. What is it about St. Anthony that is so, so attractive? I think what's attractive about St. Anthony is that he does give us stuff. When I was first ordained in 1973, I was assigned to Roger Bacon High School, which is right here in Cincinnati. I liked that ministry of teaching, but I began to feel after a few years, the need for something more challenging. For several years, I had been volunteering to be assigned in the Philippines, but the answer was always, no, we need you here at the school. So I made my living, I made my ministry, to be all that I could make of it, right there at the school. But I kept on asking. Finally, I told the provincial minister, was Father Andrew Fox. I said to him, if you think you know the will of God better than I do, then I'll do exactly what you tell me. But if you have any doubt about whether I should be working and ministering in another country, then you got a problem. Well, he said to me, you son of a gun. Actually, he said something stronger, <laughs> but I won't repeat that in church. But it was my way of trying to see if I could get what I felt 
would be best for me, best for the church, best for the friars. So I worked at it. When I was finally transferred to work in the Philippines, I told my students at Roger Bacon High School, I said, hey guys, guess what? I'm being sent into exile. They thought that was hilarious. And so it was, 1979, August, that I did finally make it to the Philippines. And when I arrived there, began getting used to the people, the customs, culture, language, all of those things, it was very intriguing to me that everywhere I went, St. Anthony was more popular than St. Francis. And I kept puzzling over that. Devotion to St. Anthony was found in practically every church. Franciscan, Jesuit, Dominican, you name it, all of them had St. Anthony novenas. They were popular. The largest St. Anthony Shrine Church had a number of statues of St. Anthony. And one of them was located just at the door as you were leaving the church. And the people had actually placed their hands on the foot of that statue so many times. <laughs> Half of the foot wore out and it was down to bare wood. So there was St. Anthony with only half a foot preaching, standing there and ready to greet all comers. It was interesting to me that the popularity of St. Anthony was so great. One day when I was talking to some people at the St. Anthony Shrine, I said to them, what is it that makes St. Anthony so popular to you? And they told me, well, St. Anthony founded the Franciscan order, didn't he? And I laughed. I said, not exactly, I think it's reverse. Francis founded the order. <clears throat> Anthony joined it. So I thought it would be good to mention a few things about that today. And note that the reason I think that everyone found St. Anthony so, so popular and made it so important in their life was the fact that St. Anthony gives stuff like Jesus in the gospel. They wanted bread or some sign. St. Anthony often did give signs to people. And that was to me very interesting. I asked one of the Filipino friars, I said, what is it that makes St. Anthony more popular than St. Francis? And he smiled and said, it's economics. You get something if you go to St. Anthony. I thought, well, that makes sense given the poverty and the difficulties that I had seen in the places in the Philippines that I had already visited. And it was interesting to me that that notion was strong in the city, strong in the remote islands, in the village, the barrio chapel, and so forth. St. Anthony was very, very popular. You know, every day at this website of the Franciscans here in Cincinnati, we receive petitions, prayers, lots of them. Sometimes in one month, I'll bring 12 pounds in a box of just these little slips of paper, have no indication who sent them, but they have been sent in through the mail. And in addition to that, there's all the ones that come 
online uh, people praying and it could be for all sorts of things they pray for health employment they pray for their their children and the success of their children help my daughter pass that exam she's got coming and sometimes of course it's also a prayer to find a spouse so these kinds of things are part of what it is that saint anthony might deliver we see and receive notes of thanksgiving also which can be very interesting if someone has lost their keys or has lost their wedding ring or something of this nature something quite valuable and they're really worried and they would really like to find it they pray to saint anthony because saint anthony delivers in fact just yesterday i had a phone call from a woman who lost her cell phone and she said she had looked everywhere she could think of but she didn't find it and so she remembered to pray for saint anthony for help then when she went out to take the dog out for a walk because the dog was needing to go out what do you think she found on the shelf in her car garage hmm it was her cell phone and so she said that's really something and i said to her yes you see saint anthony really delivers and she replied always but of course you know there's times when saint anthony does not deliver we pray sometimes for someone who is sick during these days of the COVID-19 virus pandemic. We pray, but even though we pray for their return to health, sometimes people die. Sometimes our prayers don't seem to be answered. But even then, in this time, for example, of the pandemic, God gives us the grace to bear whatever crosses come our way whether it's the cross of someone's death whether it's the cross of actually being sick all of these things are a part of what of what happens and what the lord does for us sometimes we receive grace that we didn't know we we were receiving the grace to accept the loss the grace to console other family members the grace to keep on going that's really a great gift from god too maybe the greatest and saint anthony tries to hear our prayer or help us verbalize our prayer so that we can obtain what we think we need from God. That's a reason why always we need to be thankful for God's gifts. Take the life of St. Anthony, for example. He was already a priest. He'd been a member of the Augustinians for eight, 10 years, I forget what it was. And then when he saw the relics of the first Franciscans being returned to Coimbra, Portugal, that was the capital of Portugal at that time, he was so touched by what he witnessed that he began to feel that somehow God was calling him to go into mission service. And so he decided he would join the friars. But he said, I want to be sure that you'll send me to foreign mission service. 
So it was that he was assigned, after joining the order, he was assigned to foreign mission service. It's very interesting though, that even though he was assigned, even though he got on the boat with companions who were going to Morocco to preach the gospel to the Muslims, it was very interesting, it didn't work. <laughs> Anthony thought he was going to be doing that, but he got sick on the boat even coming to the, the Moroccan coasts. He got so sick that the brothers decided it would be best if he would go back to Portugal and that maybe after he recovered his health, he should come back. We don't know for sure. But the funny part of it was, St. Anthony was on a boat supposedly going back home, and what happens? The boat is blown off course and lands in Sicily. It was a big storm. Took him way out of the way. It gets him to Sicily, where the friars there mm, very carefully nurse him back to good health. And in fact, when it was time for Pentecost, they took him with them to the Pentecost chapter uh, because that was a part of the early rule of St. Francis. It was interesting, people always ask, did he see St. Francis? Well, he may have seen him from distance, but there were a lot of friars there and maybe, maybe they did not uh, see each other for any kind of conversation. But Anthony was there and after the, the, the Pentecost chapter was over, he was assigned in a retreat house, a retiro they call it, where he could pray and act as the sacramental minister to several brothers who were not ordained and he could help with whatever was needed there in the house. There's many stories, legends. We won't go into those, but some of them say he was working mostly in the kitchen. Man after my heart, he liked to eat and he liked to cook. Anthony was sort of a hidden gem. They didn't know what his talents were. But then there was an ordination ceremony and all the friars from that retiro went in, into the, the, the house where the, uh, where the ordination would take place. And when they got there after the ordination, they were looking for someone who could give a talk to the brothers to strengthen their faith, maybe to teach them something about, about living the gospel. And it's very interesting that in that context, St. Anthony was discovered to be a very, very good, effective preacher who could bring tears to people's eyes. He could touch hearts and minds and souls that were long closed to God. And so it was that St. Anthony got a new assignment. They assigned him into Bologna, bigger city, where he would have quite a lot of people to preach to and to convert. And so it was that Anthony who was from Lisbon originally, eventually became Anthony of Padua, one of the great pilgrimages of Franciscan life. Today, you know, we're observing this novena in preparation for the feast of St. Anthony on June 13th. Many people have been suffering from the COVID-19 virus thousands have died, and 
social distancing cost many people their jobs. And many now, 26 million on yesterday's statistics, have already lost their job. That is huge. And it's not going to change overnight. Thousands and thousands, offices, factories, restaurants, sporting events, parks, travel are shut down so that more lives can be saved by social distancing. So this is a time when all of us have to make some sacrifices to save lives. So let's pray that St. Anthony will help us do what we can, what we need to do, and how best to serve our neighbors in this time. How can we pray our St. Anthony Novena today? What should we ask for? We're not under orders uh, to ask people to come to the Novena. In fact, we're not allowed. And that's why we are in uh, a chapel recording this a few days before the Tuesday Novena, an empty chapel. So this is the way it is in parishes all around. No mass, no benediction, no public worship. Maybe in some of the parishes, there is a priest celebrating mass. It's live streaming, but there's only three or four people in the church or chapel. That's the way it is today. So it all seems so strange. And I hope, and I'm sure you must be hoping, that we'll get back to normal soon. We Franciscans are praying for all of you, praying that all of us will grow during this difficult time. So let us pray in our novena now that the Lord will help us to carry the crosses that have come our way. God bless us all. Now let us join together and pray the intercessory prayers of our novena. O oh Lord, you manifest your presence, person and power in your saints. May we be united with you by imitating them. Lord Jesus, you are present among those who gather in your name. Hear our prayer as we honor you in your servant, St. Anthony. Through St. Anthony, you have manifested your love and kindness towards all. Show this continuing love and kindness to your friends and benefactors, and to those who join with us in these novena prayers on the internet. Lord Jesus, you always had a special affection for the disadvantaged. Console and comfort the sick, the poor and the sinner, the dying and the forgotten. And let us pause now for a moment to add our personal intentions. And so we pray now as Jesus taught, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And let us pray together. Almighty God, you have given St. Anthony to your people as an outstanding preacher and a ready helper in time of need. With his assistance, 
May we follow the gospel of Christ and know the help of your grace in every difficulty. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Through the intercession of St. Anthony, may the Lord God free you from every evil and give you all the blessings that you ask. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.